What's going on, family? What's going on? What's going down? What's shaking? Welcome to another episode of Nonfiction with Jonathan Soul. Uh, this episode, we're going to talk about being prepared. Now, 2020 was a very, very difficult year for a lot of us. You know, those who are listening to the sound of my voice, y'all made it. A lot of us didn't. A lot of people didn't make 2020. 2020 started out with you know, some celebrities, you know, who people cared about. I was gonna say give a damn about, but people cared about passing some in very tragic ways. And then of course there was the onset of Corona. So I remember talking to a friend of mine about this whole, you know, joblessness and Corona piece and everything. And I was like, after the first, I think maybe three or four months, I was thinking, the average American, according to what I read, doesn't have a thousand dollars in the bank for emergencies. So for you to say that's an average, if y'all know about averages, that means that some people got way more than a thousand. Some people got way less. And so you add them all up that, you know what I mean? But I was thinking we don't need savings. We need a farm because any savings you had was probably exhausted if he was out of work. And, and I know people who was looking to start cashing out, you know, some investments and stuff because they was, they was that cash strapped. So of course, savings is a big part of it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that because if there's anything 2020 taught us is to have some bread on the side. Another way to be prepared. And this is going to sound a little, little ugly is to get yourself a piece. I ain't talking about this. You know, February is black history month, right? And you know, it was beautiful for what it was, but let me tell you a little something about, uh, about being prepared. Now the NRA, which you know, supposed to be great proponents of gun rights, but when black people get jammed up for defending themselves, I will never see the NRA. They tweeted a little while ago on January the 21st. Uh, today, men and women of the NRA honor the profound life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King applied for a concealed carry permit in a May issue state and was denied. We will never stop fighting for every law abiding citizens right to self-defense hashtag MLK day. I didn't know that. And I didn't know that Dr. Martin Luther King was a regular dude, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, and so I wanted to know a little bit about that. And, uh, and so I dug a little deeper, you know, a couple of Google searches or whatever. And then, uh, I'm looking at this hill, the hill, you know, Washington publication it says, uh, the civil rights leader applied for a concealed carry permit in Alabama in 1956, shortly after his house was bombed. Uh, this detail of Martin Luther King's, uh, of, of King's life was revealed by an UCLA law professor, Adam Winkler, uh, author of the book about the history of the right to bear arms. Uh, the state laws at the time allowed authorities to issue permits, but denied King's application according to Winkler. So I think that's heavy that his house just got bombed. So why the fuck would you not want this man to have a permit unless you was cool with him not being able to defend himself? So. Uh, in my state, um, going to get training, uh, I think it's like a hundred, it's a hundred and change. It's like 125, hundred and change. Of course, it depends on the instructor. A lot of former police officers are gun instructors. And so, uh, I think that's something that everybody should look into. Um, you know, guns may seem a little expensive and ammo and a whole bit, but you know, those things fluctuate, you know, it's better to you know, make the preparations. And so when you can afford to get a gun, you do. And of course, handguns are 
or, or maybe a little expensive, but the rifles, which technically if it's a hunting rifle in most states, you don't need a license to carry, you know, you can get. So that, that's something that, that's something that you may want to look into. The theme of the show is being prepared. Now there is something else about being prepared. Um, and it's about this whole COVID thing. So every year I usually get some kind of, since I, I got in my forties and now I turned 50 a little while ago, a couple of years ago, um, I started getting the, 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 the allergies and the flus and shit. And before I never got anything like that. Um, and so one of my children actually told me, Hey daddy, why don't you get vitamin D three? I did all the research, blah, blah, blah. So I took, started taking vitamin D in April. I think it was April of 2020. I haven't had no sniffles, no, uh, you know, unless it's dust or something like that. I haven't had none of that shit. And you know, November up until I guess the spring is like flu season. So I haven't had none of that shit. Now, this is just anecdotal evidence. If you just one random dude on the internet telling you buy, buy vitamin D3. What I'm actually saying is, is that depending on your situation, you may be vitamin deficient in a number of different vitamins or minerals. And so at the end of the day, the only thing we really got to protect ourselves is our brain and our immune system. Now the brain, it's going to tell you, I don't have a right one. It's going to tell you to wear a mask. Hopefully, unless you're going to listen to a real estate developer, tell you about health, uh, health stuff. Your brain's going to tell you to wear a mask, wash your hands, the whole bit, wear gloves in some instances, keep your social distance, avoid big crowds. If you can, that kind of thing, that's the brain. And then of course the immune system, that's where the vitamins come in. So you may be okay in vitamin D. Me, I probably am deficient. You might be deficient in vitamin A or vitamin C or vitamin B or whatever. You know, barring a blood test to tell you that loading up on vitamins isn't a bad thing. Now, I like the research. And so I, I did a couple of little things. You know, I saw, uh, let's see here, WebMD, which is like the, I ain't gonna say it's the Wikipedia of medical stuff, but you know, some health reporters. Uh, Thursday, January 28th, vitamin D is essential nutrient. Uh, recent research suggests it may help guard against severe COVID-19. And then I skipped down a little bit. Uh, we know a lot. And by the way, this article is coming from WebMD. Uh, vitamin D might help fight COVID by uh, Kara um, Murez. And I'll link the article in the description. Uh, jumping down a little bit. We know a large percentage of the population has suboptimal levels of vitamin D. In fact, many, uh, as, uh, as many as half of the U S population may def be deficient in vitamin D says Christian, uh, Guter Shaw, a uh, clinical dietitian at rush university medical center in Chicago. Uh, this is possibly, this can possibly lead to symptoms, including fatigue, tiredness, hair loss, <gasps> uh, <laughs> Uh, delayed, uh, wound healing, uh, increased, uh, decreased immune health, muscle pain and more blah, blah, blah. So that's that. So then I looked in, uh, that's, that's from WebMD. Then I looked at something on the, the journal of American medicine or whatever. And they were saying maybe inconclusive, not enough data. I looked on, uh, Mayo Clinic. Uh, let's see, can vitamin D uh, protect against coronavirus disease 2019? Uh, is enough data to recommend the use of vitamin D to prevent infection of the virus that causes COVID-19 or to treat COVID-19 according to the National Institutes of Health and the World Health Organization? Y you know what I mean? So, uh, so this is, this is, this is what I did early on last year. Uh, what did Trump get to fight COVID-19? I said, whatever they giving this rich motherfucker, it must be, it must be the truth. 
All right, then let me uh, let me see. All right, then. So this is what Trump got. Trump, and I actually did this. This is, I think this is this, but this and my kid telling me this is probably why I started buying a lot of shit off of Amazon behind this. Uh, dexamethasone. This, these are the things that Trump received. Okay, and this is coming out of uh, uh, Burks. Let's see, uh, BurkersHospitalReview.com. Again, I put this in the description. Uh, uh, dexamethasone. President Trump received the steroid commonly used to treat asthma. So <laughs> kind of thing. Okay. Uh, remdesivir. Trump received the first dose of remdesivir Octo uh, Oct uh, October uh, 2nd. He will be given the five day course. Uh, CNN reported remdesivir is made by uh, Galid, G Galilid, G I L E A D. Uh, let's see. Granted as emergency authorization. So it's an experimental drug. It's supposed to, um, help, you know, a fast recovery. All right. Uh, Regeneron's monoclonal antibody. So people who had, uh, Corona and then recovered their body developed antibodies, right? Little soldiers in the blood that fight that particular disease. So then what happens is a hospital or medical people take the guy's blood or the girl's blood, isolate those antibodies, and then kind of make a version of them. And then a big old vat for mass distribution. And the reason why I know that, and I can't see because the room is dark, is because my Samsung phone, right? Samsung has a Samsung biological division that actually does that. I'm like, God damn, I thought they just made phones. But yeah, they, they, they actually, they take the antibodies and clone. So Trump got that. Okay. Zinc. President Trump was given zinc, according to the Times, to help immune system fight outside bacteria and viruses. All of us should have this shit in our closet. Vitamin D. Trump was given vitamin D, the Times reported, uh, which is a good, uh, which is good for bone health. There is no evidence that Trump, that, Vitamin D directly reduces the risk of COVID-19 and the FDA has sent out warning letters to companies trying to sell vitamin D products as COVID-19 treatments. COVID-19 can help reduce inflammation according to the National Institutes of Health. Now Trump got access to the best doctors on planet earth and they gave him vitamin D for his bones. Really? Okay. Uh, fam. Tidine, famididine, F A M O T I D I N E. My mother used to spell words when I was little. <laughs> I still can't read no better. <laughs> I was a kid. Anyway, uh, a generic name for Pepsid. Oh, they gave him an antacid to fight heartburns. That's interesting. And melatonin, which I got right there. Uh, commonly used uh, to treat insomnia. Some studies suggest that melatonin can help COVID-19 patients with diabetes and obesity, according to CNN. And then lastly, aspirin. So some of this shit we can't get. We can't get ramdesivir and uh, the antibodies, but God damn it, we can get zinc. We can get melatonin. We can get vitamin D. So be prepared. The other thing is this, when I talked about, you know, your brain protecting you and then your immune system. Well, here's the thing. A lot of us are buying these masks that we're getting, we're finding in the, in the little stores. We don't know where the masks come from. Well, some of us do. A lot of these masks come from China. Now we know that China has a kind of a, a unbridled form of capitalism. They got the capitalist piece and they got the state to back them up, which we got in America. Let's be real. You know, remember when, um, that guy, he was a former Goldman Sachs person was the head of the treasury and he was like, just give me a blank check and I'll save the economy. Y'all remember that? That's the same thing China got over there. The difference is we got regulations. China don't have, as far as I'm aware, no strong, like a EPA kind of vibration. How many times have you, maybe not recently, but how many times have you, uh, heard about explosions in China at some factory that you can see from space. That usually happens in China. All right. So 
I started thinking about the mask. I was like, well, isn't it funny that we get the virus from China? And that's not a, a racist. Or that's just a, that's a statement of fact. You know, we got it from China. But then we got to buy the ventilators. And we got to buy the, uh, the masks and the gloves and shit from China. So I started looking. And uh, I found this little article. Let's see if I can find it right quick. Sorry for the clicking. You know, when you got a thousand tabs open, everything seemed like it seemed like it was better when I was practicing here. Okay. So I got this from the, uh, C, the CBP.gov. All right. CBT.gov. And so let's page eight, just tell you what the name of this place is. So the CBD.gov is the uh, customs and border protection agency. Okay. And this is their uh, trade and travel report, fiscal year, uh, 2020, February, uh, 2021. So I'm looking through here, you know, got a little tip from something I saw on the interwebs and on page eight, I find something interesting. Okay. Under the subheading responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, COVID-19, the CBP saw a decrease in trade volume in fiscal year 2020 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic with entry summary volumes decreasing by 8% when compared to uh, fiscal year uh, 2019. And I'm skipping words to try to get to the point. A large decrease occurred in the third quarter of the fiscal year during the months, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So then it says here in fiscal year 2020, the CBP, the Customs uh, uh, Border Protection also sees the large number of counterfeit, unapproved, or, un or otherwise substandard COVID-19 related products that threaten the health and safety of American consumers. Let me say that again. The Border Patrol sees the large number of counterfeit, unapproved, or otherwise substandard COVID-19 related products that threaten the health and safety of American consumers. These seizures included 177,356 Food and Drug Administration prohibited uh, COVID tests, uh, 300, let's see, 370 incidents. Uh, so I'm going to round the numbers, okay? 12 million counterfeit face mask, 3,800 prohibited, uh, chloroquine tablets and half a dozen seeds just fit the, do you remember when Trump was talking about hydrochloroquine and all that kind of shit? Now, listen, I love a good conspiracy theory and I always think the man is out to get you and uh big farm and the whole bit, but I started looking up chloroquine and governments was banning it around the world. Governments was banning it, but the, 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 the icing on the cake is when Trump got the heavies, when Trump caught it, they wasn't talking nothing about the hydrochloroquine, nothing. I read to you a few minutes ago what they gave him. So I'm like, you don't believe your own shit. In other words, he's being the pipe piper to that particular population. Remember he said, I could shoot some on fifth Avenue and I wouldn't get arrested. The people who will be okay with that. The people who storm the Capitol, that's the hydrochloroquine gang, even though Trump ain't taking it. So anyway, so China, so I was thinking, well, fuck this man. It's a setup. So again, Google search found, I think like four companies. <laughs> if I was I could have found more. I found four companies that, that are making the mask locally. One of them even had a video of like their little machine look like a kind of printing press kind of deal. So I bought, I'm not going to give you their names cause I haven't received the product and I don't know if the product's any good. So I'm not going to, I don't recommend stuff that I don't buy and I'll have in hand, but you know, I'm looking at my little things here. Uh, both of them, each of them around 25 to 30 bucks for 50 masks. Um, the, the four companies I looked at, all of them was about the same price and, um, one had free shipping. Um, the other one, actually both of them had free shipping. 
and uh, they had like um, parcels of 50 and 200 and more. And so since I don't know these people from Adam, I just bought, you know, a small a box and then if, I, if it works, then I buy some for me and the rest of my, my family. But that's another way to be prepared because when you go into the store, especially these cheaper stores, everything is from China. And I think that could be a problem. So anyway, family, the theme is be prepared. You know what I mean? If you can try to get yourself a baseball bat or, or, you know, or something like that to protect yourself and your family in case the economy doesn't recover as fast as we need it to, uh, make sure you get that vitamin, whatever you need in you, you know, remember what Trump, what they gave Trump zinc, vitamin D, they gave aspirin, they gave melatonin, you know, all those things, you know, look into that, see if that's something that might, might fit your situation. And then of course, you know, you might want to consider buying American made masks because of what the border patrol is finding out here in these uh, COVID streets. I love you guys. Uh, my name is Jonathan soul. Uh, I have a, a novel out, uh, called, uh, Malcolm Mars, three brothers who went to HBCU and, uh, I always wanted to go to HBCU. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't get a scholarship <laughs> and, um, they built a homemade starship and it took their families to Mars. And there's a lot of politics and some, some interesting intrigues about that. There's, you know, aliens and, and, and high technology and family. It's the kind of sci-fi novel that I want. Um, think about deep space nine with the husband and the wives, like three couples and they got kids. Think about it almost like that sort of kind of that feeling. They're not on a spaceship they're on a planet and things like that. And they're interfacing with aliens and mean people back on earth and, and, uh, other creatures and stuff like that. But yeah, so it's on Amazon. It's called Malcolm Mars, Malcolm, like the prophet Mars, like the planet by Jonathan soul. And, uh, it's an electronic book. I think it's like three bucks and, uh, I appreciate you for it. All right. Love you guys. Hope all your dreams come true. You can go to javasoul.com and you can see more of, uh, my commentaries. And of course I do a, another, uh, show called, uh, uh, super black comic book reviews. I believe in entrepreneurship and I was an artist in another life. And so I review, uh, black owned comics, people who had comics in their head all their life and they grew up and they became artists or writers. And they have some fantastic, fantastic comics. And I review them. Anyway, love you guys. Peace.